Hey guys, welcome back to another installment of Hair Tube. I'm here today with Alexia. Hi guys. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, I only met Alexia today um, and she's coming to have me cut her hair. Uh, I've had a bit of a chat off camera. She said to me she wants her hair laid, so um, we're going to have a chat about that together um, because I think we need to have a chat about um, layering and the commitment to actually having your hair laid and what that might mean in three months' time if Alexa wants to grow it out. Um, something is very important to talk about with your clients because um, they might have uh, something in their mind about what they actually want to have um, and then at the back end of that when it grows out it's like I didn't realise it was going to be like this at the end so um, I guess uh, for me as a hairdresser I like to be quite thorough um, to make sure that again as I've said in other videos whatever we do today has to be able to transition into something in six eight weeks time so that might mean growing it out without looking like a growing it's going to grow out or being able to push the haircut into another space that offers change rather than going from a one being very, very like light trim to a 10. Once you go from one to 10, where do you go from 10? It's like for a period of maybe, you know, eight, 10 weeks, maybe even 12 weeks, um, your client's gonna go through a period of growing it out. You won't see them and that's not good because we want them to come back to the salon as often as possible. So um, with the layering for me, it's about finding balance between uh, having shape and having the things that we just mentioned about the ability to move around with the shape. So I don't wanna put Alexia in a, in a position where she feels like She's had a layered look for a while and now I want to change and I have to have that conversation with her, okay, you're going to have to grow this out for a while. Um, that's not good. So um, we're just going to frame up her face a little bit. Um, we're going to get her over the basin and, and get her prepped. But when she comes back, we're going to get into a little bit more about how I actually get to the point where I, you know, I feel comfortable with what I'm about to do with my client and she or he understands exactly what we're going to do. So I'm going to go into that with you a little bit today and we haven't done that before, so that could be fun. Sound like fun? Um, we're going to get Alexia over to the base and get a prep and we're back. Alexia is back from the basin um, and now we're going to have a chat about what we're going to do about hair because as I've said she wants her hair laid and she wants her shape change so we need to find out why so I'm just going to spin you around this way. Okay so you said to me that you wanted to have your hair laid a little bit so why is there a reason why you want to have your hair laid is it about shape is it about movement? Um, yeah I just want to keep the line yep. and yeah, have a little bit of when I curl it I like to see the curl. So you don't like the hair falling at all one length. So in other words, yeah. if it falls all at the same point, it's like triangular. So by introducing some layering, you're hoping that when you curl your hair, it's going to stack rather than all sitting out here. Yeah. Yeah. What about when you wear your hair straight? Are you happy to see layers? Yeah. Okay. So you are. And the reason why that's really important to ask is because um, I often, and if you're out there watching this, it might happen to you also. But I often have my clients say to me, "I want my hair." Um, I want volume and I want movement, but I don't want to have any layers. So that gets asked to me all the time. So if, if that's something that someone's asking you, there's a way to do that. Alexia's told me that she's happy to see the layers, whether it's weird, curly or straight. So we're going to approach this very, very differently. So um, it's really important to determine that. Um, and then we're going to introduce some shape around the face. Things important. How do you feel about having it sort of there around the level of your cheeks? I like it. Yep. As long as we keep majority of this, yeah. we just clean it up there where it needs to be uh, trimmed. Yeah? Yes. Cool. So, uh, you know, very, very brief sort of simple com consultation. Obviously, because I've spoken to her off camera, um, it would be far more in depth if I hadn't have, uh, because I already got most of the information I needed. So we're going to start by starting the ends. We're going to create a foundation. Then I'm going to frame it up around the face. And then last, we'll do the layering. And then we'll style it. So we'll get started. As you can see, I've pre-dried the hair. I like to always prep the hair and dry it first. Um, it's a personal preference when I'm doing these particular type of haircuts. Um, can you do it when it's wet? Yes. The reason why um, I don't is because, as I've said many times, I find that sometimes when you're cutting hair wet, there are naturally occurring elements that can be overlooked, especially when we're layering the top, like the crown, um, fringes if you're going to introduce some shorter shape around the front hairlines can obviously have a big impact on that all those things can go you know sort of missed if you're cutting hair wet all the time so I cut it dry it's a little bit more difficult to control 
but I find that with practice, that gets a little bit easier. And the benefits of cutting hair dry far way out the, the little bit of extra patience you need to control the hair um, while you're cutting it dry, so. You should cut all your hair off short one day. Maybe, maybe we can get a, a vote. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon we could get people to say to cut it off. You would have heard me say it often before, there are times when I cut hair where it's very important for the sectioning to be super methodical and perfect. This is not one. Um, it's essentially, if you can control the hair between the comb and the scissors sharp enough to cut that section of hair, for me, that's fine. Um, I am working in a rectangle like always. Um, I'm not real concerned about making sure that every little you know, piece of hairs out of the way or, because as I've said previously, I think sometimes we can overcomplicate things with sectioning. Um, and it's just about understanding what you're doing, knowing what you're doing and having intent to do it that way. And as long as you know why you're doing something, then I think um, the chance of um, not getting a desirable outcome is quite low. If I was doing a major change to the length of Alexia's hair, the sectioning would be very, very different. I'm just trimming up her ends. If this was a client I'd previously done before, it would be even easier because it's my haircut and I know where um, my design lines are and I know exactly um, where I need to trim and what I need to be doing. Taking a, probably around about two centimeters, that's more than enough to create the foundation that we need. make sure you stay within the head shape you don't want to be cutting it out on the shoulder it's not that that's wrong that's just not the shape that we're working with today so if you you struggle to do that a really good tip is when you're cutting on the left sit to the right that'll automatically help you over direct it and when you're cutting on the right to sort of sit to the left that certainly um, makes a big difference Last section in the back. Back's done, I'm gonna take my comb and split this down the middle. We're gonna cut the sides, slash the front. Um, could you look into the middle for me? Uh, into the mirror, sorry, thank you. Perfect. This is a great way to um, have your client sitting so you don't have to worry about dodging your shoulder. You take your guideline obviously from the back. Um, Alexia asked me not to cut too much off and you can see there um, it was a good guess because when we bring this through into the side it's literally like just joining that in the front with the smallest amount of hair. It's done. Keep it nice and sharp. Could you look at me now? And this way? Perfect. Same again, just letting it fall naturally, don't stretch the hair. You don't need to have all this from the back there, you just need to make sure you have enough so that your guideline's visible. And again, we're just taking this off, keeping it nice and sharp. Could you look at me? 
perfect. I spoke to Alexia about framing a face up. And as I always like to do when I'm creating shapies, I like to set markers. So I'm gonna do that by cutting almost like a curtain fringe or bangs as my guideline to then shape the rest of the hair. So I do that by taking a really narrow but deep triangle section right over where a hair parts naturally. I always like to work with natural parts if I can. It's all about making it easy to, to wear and style. So it's the leanest little triangle. If you could just pop your head down, babe. You can see that there. And I'll spin you to the side now so you can see the angle. Just chin up, thank you. Most important thing is you make sure that the short hair is behind the long hair because short hair directs long hair. So um, if you want to move long hair around, you have to put short hair either in between it, in front of it or behind it to get it to move where you want it to go. So when I drop this, you'll actually see that when you let that go, you can see that You've got short here, hair there, the long hair is underneath. So what that does is actually um, create that natural, well it's not natural because we've just done it, but it automatically will push the hair off the face because you have short hair pushing this long hair back and you can see that, it's really, really simple. So it's shorter here and longer and it's always gonna keep that. If you wanted to do a curtain fringe, that you just, I just showed you how to do it, but I just use that as a guide to then create the rest of the shape. I'm actually gonna do it a little bit shorter. So the other good thing about this, and we spoke in previous videos, is it's all about consistency. And when you're using very strategic, intentional sections like this, it's very easy to go back and find it and then replicate it again for your client. We spoke about uh, clients always wanting to have that consistency because if you've done something that they like and they want you to do it again, if you haven't followed a really distinct pattern with your sectioning, it's very, very hard to replicate and you'll never, you'll never get it exactly the same again. But if you have really good sectioning, you get it pretty, pretty close, like pretty close. So you can see there's just a little bit of extra hair I have to remove out of there. And then because I've done that lean triangle, it's very easy for me to find that, that original section and trim it again. So just gonna make it a little bit shorter. That seems good. Now I'm gonna to add to that some, probably about a quarter of a centimeter on either side of my original section, just to create a bit more width. However, this time I'm actually going to over direct it to retain length. So the long hair actually is now behind the short hair. When I pull this around and just bring that off the face, you'll see that you could actually leave it like that because the way that that technique allows the hair to sit. You can see that it sits in perfectly like that. And you could get away with actually just leaving it that way. You create that, that sort of editorial where it's all very soft and, and seamless. But as I said, I'm using that as a guide for the rest of my haircut. So, again, I'm gonna take as little or as much hair as I can handle. So I'm happy with that. We're going to use layering above 90 degrees and we're over directing to retain length because I'm going to cut these corners off. You can see my guideline from my is in there. Make sure you elevate the hair. Not only does it retain length, but it's also going to dictate how the hair falls. So rather than cutting hair with a really low projection and then going back and texturizing it later, a more intelligent way to do it is actually use projection to determine how the hair is going to fall, like that. Keep following this through until we run out of hair and then we repeat it on the other side.
This side's done. Now we're going to do the other side. I take some hair from my first section as a guide. Again, making sure to project above 90 degrees, over direct to retain length. And we just want to frame the face up. We don't want it to be um, compromising the length. So we want to make sure we over direct to retain length. You don't want to end up cutting it away from the chest. We actually want it to come onto the chest. is where I'm standing to the opposite side is actually your body position is very important in ensuring the over director hair. If you're standing in front here, you're actually running into yourself. You have to get out of the way so that you can actually turn your body and over direct it. And again, we keep bringing hair from the back into the front until we run out. See, there's our point. We want to make sure we don't cut that off. Bring all this forward. Just chin down just a little bit, darling. Thank you. So we're almost out of here. Let's grab a little bit of hydrosol spray. Just settle down the the flyway and the static a little bit. You can see there's still a little bit overhanging here. Pick all this up at once. Chin up, gorgeous. Thank you. I like to stand behind just to cross check. Looking down on it makes it a little bit easier. We can just clean out any of the little hairs that we may have missed. And then we use a, a low projection just to clean out a little bit of the graduation that pokes out from underneath. Just spin you around, check that side. Looks pretty good. Head this way for me, darling. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, what we need to do is we actually need to match the texture. So if you guys have a look, 
you can see that the density here is more than here. Pretty much that happens because we have that much here on this side because of where it's parted and only this much here. So the way that I, I do this is some, sometimes <clears throat> you can texturize it. It's not something I like to do. As I've already said, I like to use projection to determine how the hair falls rather than texturizing the hair. So we're gonna bring this all up at about 180 degrees using the same sectioning pattern that we did. Just chin this way a little bit, thank you. And then we over direct it to retain length and you watch how this falls once we take this off. So essentially layering, there's no texturizing there at all when we let that go. Now it falls soft. Like on the other side, let's pull it back off the face and we'll see what it looks like. That's nice. Maybe we can do a little bit more. Yeah, it looks good. I like it too. But it can be better. I'll show you. Little changes make a big difference. So just gonna make a little change. Just close your eyes darling, I don't want to get cut hair in there. I'm just gonna project it a little bit higher above 90. Yep. That's better. Let's repeat on this side. So we should end up with, essentially what we're doing is we're creating a concave shape around the face. So this is the same, yeah. So you should end up with this nice V shape here in the front. I just wanted to make it a tiny little bit shorter so I'd hit a cheekbone. It often is the case that you have to intentionally leave one side longer than the other um, so it balances. And that often happens when we have side partings because there's less hair on one side than the other than, than like, there's less hair on one side due to where we part it. So this has to be more sudden than the open side. So that's the closed side, that's the open side. So that's how I make sure there's balances because you actually have to make sure that the, the closed side has a more sudden and this is a more gradual transition from long from short to long and then when we pull it back off the face it's visually balanced that's great then as i did in the beginning we did this little triangle i'm actually going to go all the way to the back we're going to create a deeper wider triangle there and then I'm actually going to zigzag over it because something colorists do a lot is they use zigzag partings to diffuse color. It's actually a really good way to diffuse cutting lines as well. So I'll just show you guys how that might look. Yeah. And then we don't cut straight lines we texturize over the top. And what this does is create a diffused veil using diagonal, or well, well, they're opposing diagonal sections or zigzag sections. Just to create that little bit of softness through there. I think I'll, that'll be cool now. 
This should require no manipulation, should be able to just literally pull it back off the face and have it falling really nice. I can't see you guys can, I hope it looks good. Baseline's done, we framed up around the face, now we're going to uh, lay the interior haircut. And again, we're gonna start by creating ourselves a guideline. Guidelines just so I can determine the shortest part. Spin around. So Alexia asked me if I could layer her hair so that when she wore it curly or straight, she had the hair not all falling at one length. And I don't want to make it too classic and like, you know, I don't want that classic sort of layered look. So you can see I've just chopped that as a guide. I think we can get away with making it a bit shorter than that. Yeah, I think that's good. All right. So now what I want to do is use that as my guideline for layering. And again, I'm always working short to long. So important that the short hair goes behind the long hair. That's how we get the hair to move by itself. It's actually the golden rule to cutting hair. Once you master the idea, the concept that short hair directs long hair, everything gets easier. So to ensure I don't have a classic laid look, I'm going to over direct it. Bring this this way so you can actually see the angle. Actually, we'll go this way. Short to long, super important, you remember that? We keep working uniform until we run out of hair. Make sure you keep it within the head shape on the last section, we don't want to end up out here. There's no hair growing out of the side of someone's neck or their ear, so you'll create a big hole if you follow that around. It's really important that you stay within the head shape, and bring that back. So just cross checking, bring it all back to the middle. Chin down to be gorgeous, thank you. Make sure it's all how it should be. It's almost perfect. Tension's really important for this. And we bring it all in together. The hair falls out underneath, it's fine, don't go chasing it. And then we're gonna really carefully texturize. We wanna make sure we don't cut over our cutting line. Don't wanna go this way. You wanna make sure that we're going and gently removing the weight without disrupting our cutting line, otherwise all the hard work that you did is undone. I'm just going to over direct it even more for that. And if we've done this right, let me bring this back when we're at straight. We shouldn't have that classic layered look. It should appear at first glance to be all one length until you start to move the hair around and then you can see the movement that Alexi has asked for. You also get volume there as well. So I like that because you get all the benefits without having to grow the hair out per se, as we discussed in the beginning of the video, there's no advantage to me to use a lower projection and then just having like classic laid look. Yes, you will take more weight out of the end. So if there's a shape that you're creating that you want it to flick out, then you don't really have much choice. That has to be done. But with long hair that they want flexibility with styling, curly or straight, for me, this is the best way to do it. Now we just uh, bring the sides into the back and we're we'll ready to do the styling. What we should see now is when we're doing I guess it is almost slightly diagonal back. It doesn't have to be in, like traditional diagonal back like this, it, but it is slightly diagonal back. We should actually see the shaping that we did in the front start to meet 
the layering that we just did in the back. And that's where we want to connect these two. And again, we want to make sure that we bring this in to the middle because I don't want to create holes over the shoulders. There should be quite a fair bit of hair to cut off here. Yep. Just so you guys can see, I've taken it down there into the middle of the back. So it's essentially where I was projecting the hair back to when I was just bringing the sides of the back into the middle of the back. I want to bring this all the way around. If the hair falls out, when you start to lift this or project this to where we need to cut it, that's fine. It's obviously already short and it doesn't need to be cut. See, it's literally just here. this up and now we're going to texturize it like we did in the back don't re-texturize here you've already texturized if let that fall out we just want to soften here you can see I'm over directing to the other side for the same reasons is when you over direct the hair, when you layer it, I want the hair to fall out and I want it to be softer because the further away from where the hair falls naturally, you cut it, the softer it will fall. The closer you cut it to its natural fall, the more solid it becomes. So I, I use the same method when I texturize hair as when I layer it. I want it to be fall really soft and I want it to look gentle. I don't want to see where I've texturized it. You project it away, you texturize it, and then when it falls back, it's nice and soft. So now that's done, we'll just repeat that on this side. Bringing this side in, over directing, taking it off, and then texturizing, making sure we over direct it to the other side of the head. Just look up to the ceiling, please. See how it looks good. All right, now it's time to do some styling. That's heaps better. What do you think? Look amazing. All right, two things I need to do first. First is, close your eyes darling. A little bit of texture and a bit of volume in the top. Height rise is great for that. And whenever I use height riser, I like to just, a little bit of a blast, just from a height, just to, if there's any residual on there. It's a great product to be able to mold the hair into place where you want it to sit. And then we'll finish with some style fixer just on the inside. On our hands. Just pop this underneath. Spin around this way so I can see. Even one side off the face is quite nice too. What do you think? I love it. Look great. Let's just change your like your face so much. Yeah. I think it's a um, it's really um, quite a powerful thing to be able to just cut three centimetres of hair off around someone's face and make them look different. And I think um, 
Yeah. Although, yeah, I love it being straight and that. Yeah, well, we're going to curl it, but I wanted to actually um, show that it flat brushed it. We did round brush it a little bit. You can see in here just to smooth it and sort of turn the hair away. But I want it to be more wash and wear um, and not so over styled. I've done a few videos now of um, you know adding curl to the hair and stuff like that and it does look fabulous but uh, for Alexa, Alexia every day uh, for her to do that might not be realistic so I can show you what it would probably look like on most days given that all she needed to do was flat brush the hair and then maybe smooth it out around the face with a round brush. So I think it looks really good. I think maybe at first glance it may look a little bit simple, but I don't think simple is basic. I think simplicity can actually be really beautiful and this is a great example of that. So thanks for coming and uh, hanging out with me for an hour. It was good. <laughs> if you guys like this video, make sure you share it with someone who you think may like it also and please subscribe to the channel. And can you come follow me on Instagram? Yeah, no one follows me on Instagram. <laughs> no, I don't know what I'll it's going on. Do you? Oh, that's one more than I had before today started, which is good. Well, you better give it a shout out. What's your Instagram? Alexa's on Rex. Do you want to spell it? It's A-L-E-X-I-A-V-E-G-M-R-E-T. There it is right there. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. Again, I really appreciate, uh, appreciate your support. Uh, you know, the comments is what motivates me. I love the gratitude. So thanks very much. And until next time, it's bye.